Welcome back Troglodytes to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a very special one, a Les Paul Artisan. A very early example. If you read up on Les Paul Artisans, apparently there was one shipped in 1974 and like six or so in 75. And then 76 is kind of when this series first was, you know, officially released besides, you know, the very few before that. So personally, I consider 1976 to basically be the first year of these because the early ones rarely ever show up. And I believe they went all the way through 81, 82. I don't think I've made an inside look series on one of these is because I've been really looking for an all original example. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be early, but I just wanted, you know, a really nice example to show you guys before I do an inside look series. So this was supposed to be it. I even specifically asked the seller is this all original? I need to know. He said yes. I get it and my heart's broken. Somebody refretted this. Not the most professional job ever. You've got some light flaking in the ebony fretboard around the fret, so it's a real shame because this is a super early example. The Les Paul Artisan, it gets its name because it's dressed up kind of like one of the old Gibson banjos. You have your Artisan truss rod cover, you have your pre-war Gibson style logo there, and your banjo style inlays. And that just kind of makes these guitars look really fancy. They came uh, with three humbuckers, I believe uh, two humbuckers was an option. You do see some with two humbuckers out there, but I believe they came standard with three until 78, and that's when they came standard two special order three. And then I just read an article that kind of stated the opposite, so I'm kind of confused myself now, but this one has a beautiful top here. What makes this one early, and how do I know it's an early one? You have to take a look at the serial number here to tell that it's an early one. Now a lot of you probably don't even know this, but there was a very short time in Gibson's history where the serial numbers began with a letter in 74 and 75 before switching over to that decal system in 76. This one, the serial number is C924819. So this kind of puts this guitar in an elite place as a very early example, because that means this neck was stamped in 74 or 75. However, the electronics date it to very late 76, so I'm going to go ahead and say this is a 1976 Les Paul Artisan, so it's a super early example. A great one for your collection. Thankfully, it still has the original pickups in it. You know, everything is stock except for the refret. So if you can get over the refret and get over some chipping on the fretboard, and it's a, a little bit beat up, it is a very nice original example. This one actually reminds me of my old personal artisan. It was another one of these C stamped ones. It had a little area of wear right here by the neck because that's where the guy's thumb would rest, I guess. So there's actually a website that keeps track of these very early artisans. And there's very few of them that has ever even shown up. Take a look at the condition here on the headstock now that we've gone over kind of what the everything looks like here. There's lots of string change wear, some dulling to the finish. I'm sure a professional polish job would uh, do this guitar wonders. We've got some edge wear here and just lots of scratches in general. You've got some light finish checking in this area as well. But overall, I mean, the headstock's not in too bad of shape. The nut has been replaced on this guitar. It's kind of a nylon style. Uh, thankfully, there was no like major damage. Sometimes when you redo a nut, you'll get a crack here, like in the finish. But you don't have any of that, thankfully. But once again, the frets have been redone. The fret nibs are gone. And I wouldn't say this is the most professional refret job I've ever seen. There's just some light chipping on the uh, fretboard you can kind of see coming from the frets and that's very common on ebony fretboards because they're pretty brittle when you go to refret them you'll see like those chippings in it so i'll kind of run the light over here i mean there's not a lot but it is there it should definitely be known however uh whoever did the refret they wanted to keep it the original style fret so they're about the same style 
and uh, like height as the original frets so they're not giant or anything they're actually fairly small yet so you might want to refret it to your specifications because a lot of the finish on the neck has kind of been naturally worn off but at least all the inlays are still there none of them are loose Sometimes you'll find that with these Les Paul Artisans, they'll be missing a few inlays. Onto the body of this guitar. It's a three-piece top. I mean, it's the same thing as any other Les Paul. You got your maple top, mahogany back and sides, um, and maple neck on this one. Now, the condition of the guitar, I mean, it's not too bad. It's got a lot of hazing to the finish, as I was saying before. It's a little bit sticky. I didn't, you know, super polish this one up or anything. Got some light scratches from regular play wear. But nothing too bad on the top, and that's always a big thing for me. I mean, you've got some dings in the clear coat here and some scratches, but I like my tops to be pretty clean. I mean, this one definitely satisfies my need for that. Uh, the back of the guitars, uh, well, I, I, I'm going to say it's trashed. I mean, it's pretty buggered up, but I mean, it's not the worst I've seen either. Uh, you have your original tar back pickups in here, which is a big thing on these guys because these tar backs are going bad. Like, that's the biggest thing about these Les Paul Artisans is I can't get them all original because somebody's already swapped out the pickups because one of them's already died. Thankfully, they're all here. The gold is heavily tarnished on them, unfortunately. And uh, you also have the tarnishing on the bridge and tail piece, both of those. But what I really like about this one, similar to my old personal 76 Artisan, is that it has a lot of nice wood grain as you're seeing here. You've got some long streaks there. And this middle piece, I love it. There's like really wide ribbon-like flame right there. But it's just in that center piece. So it's definitely a very cool Les Paul Artisan. I wish I could find one that just had an all flamed top because that would look awesome. But overall, once again, everything's original here. I mean, we've already gone over the non-original parts, nut and frets and some light chipping to the fretboard. Back of the headstock here, you have your Gibson branded Schaller tuners. They're gold. They do show some tarnishing and whatnot. You've got some light wear and tear up here. Once again, serial number C924, looks like 819. There is a Made in USA stamp as well. It's kind of hard to see it. That C might look like a zero to you when you get it, but it is a C. And a uh, three piece maple neck once again even though it kind of looks like it was stained mahogany it is maple uh, the back here uh definitely slim 60s profile you've got some finish wear through the finish there but honestly it doesn't look so bad since the natural wood kind of looks the same as the finish anyways but the neck does feel a little bit sticky i would uh, suggest uh, giving that a, a more thorough cleaning and polish job and up here towards the neck, there's kind of like some light bubbling to the finish or something. That's probably caused by like the player going up like this and hitting it with their hand, a lot of sweat. So you can kind of see some finish checking. I mean, it's not brake crack or repair or anything, but it's just kind of a, an eyesore area as I'd like to call it. Now the back of the guitar, once again, I was saying it's kind of chewed up. You can kind of see that here. It's got lots of buckle rash. And I don't mind this light buckle wear stuff, the buckle worming as they call it, but it's stuff like this that I don't like a lot that breaks the finish and is really deep. I mean, that's a pretty deep one. It goes through the clear coat even. And uh, there's kind of a large ding right here. Get it in the light. That's a pretty large impression there. And you've got some uh, strap wear here. So definitely a lot of wear and tear here on the back go slowly in the light. I mean, I mean, it's a lot of wear and if you, you pretty well see it in all angles. I mean some angles are a lot worse than others but look underneath all that in an angle that you don't see it in. Once again beautiful wood grain. It's a shame this one got kind of buggered up but at the same time you know it's a great playing guitar. It's a good thing that it has wear. It's just from a collector's standpoint, it's like, so close. <laughs> Why did they play this one? <laughs> this one does have a pancake body, which you won't find on all Les Paul Artisans because I believe pancakes stopped in uh, 76. What pancake bodies are is they're a mahogany maple mahogany sandwich. 
and it was actually more expensive to produce guitars this way, but uh, people didn't like it. Because sometimes they'll delaminate and you'll get some splitting, but this example doesn't have any of that, and that's really rare. Uh, usually you'll see that on like water damaged examples, and then those photos show up online and people go, I don't want to buy a pancake body after seeing what happens if you leave them in water. Well, you shouldn't have your guitar in water to begin with. But overall, Les Paul Artisans, they're really cool guitars. Uh, I'm a big fan of these kind of unique Norlin era models, and the Les Paul Artisan is a must-have. When I think Les Paul Artisan, I think walnut finish, three pickups. They also have a tobacco sunburst one. They kind of have a darker walnut finish like this. Uh, a lot of them will start off dark and then they age to this color. Uh, there's also a very rare white Les Paul Artisan out there with black binding. There's only like 10 or so of those made. But these are just really classic guitars. They're very fancy looking and definitely something that will help you stand out in the crowd. I do want to point out here that the plastic on the pickup ring here is broken in these two screw areas, but it does still secure just fine. I forgot to mention this one saddle in the bridge has been replaced. You can see the screw's a different color and it's a little larger than the other ones, but very minor. You can easily replace one of these whole bridges if you wanted to. All right, let's take a look at this Les Paul under black light. You can see everything's good on the uh, face of the headstock. No missing finish or anything. Once again, some light wear and tear, scratches and light nicks and dings, but once again, nothing too extreme. In front of the body, you can see there's a small area of missing finish right there where it's darker. You know, once again, that chipped pickup ring and you can kind of see some dings. You definitely have some light wear and tear and some light finish wear, but original knobs. I mean, everything's stock on this guitar except for the frets and nut. But everything, that's the good stuff, is still there. Back of the headstock, you can see some wear and tear on the top of the guitar. And some light finish wear along the edges and some light nicks and dings. I mean, it's by no means a collector condition guitar, but a collector might choose to purchase this one simply because it's hard to find in this early of production model version of the Les Paul Artisan. So you can see there where it's kind of darker, where some of the natural lacquer has been worn off. But the whole neck feels very worn in. I'm surprised there's not more clear coat wear. And there's that area on the side of the neck heel there. And the back of the guitar, once again, features a lot of buckle wear, some large dings, divots, dents. I mean, it's pretty worn on the back. The side of the guitar also shows some wear and some chipping to the finish, but the pancake body is in perfect shape. It's not separating anywhere or anything like that. Something else I want to point out here is there is this line here. Don't mistake that for a headstock repair. That's actually kind of like a wood grain line. Uh, the more you view it in like different angles, it does that whole like ribbon flame type thing where it uh, changes what it looks like. But it is just part of the wood grain as you saw in the black light test. This Artisan weighs 10 pounds, 12 ounces, which is about average for these. I'd actually say it's on a little on the light side. This Artisan comes in a Gibson USA brown case from the 90s, so no, it's not the original case. The original case for these would have been the, uh, the regular Les Paul case of the 70s. It usually has like a red or purple like an interior. As far as cases go, those aren't the most protective, but uh, I will say that this one's probably actually a better case than those. Uh, I would prefer a chainsaw case, but that came a little bit later, so this artisan definitely would not have came in one of those. But you can see this one's got some scratches and some scuffs and some usage marks and whatnot, but combo lock hasn't been set, so that's up to you. You have one, two, three and a fourth back latch, which are all functioning, and a pink interior here. It's definitely a good case. It holds the guitar very secure. 
these 90s TKL made Gibson USA cases are very highly revered. They've got nice heel support and just decent padding all around. I mean, they really are good cases with double neck supports. Nothing in the compartment lid there, but it does hold your guitar well. For the cleans, we'll be running through a Gibson Super Gold Tone GA30RV. The dirty tones come from a Marshall JMP1C. might be interested in adding this Gibson Les Paul Artisan to your collection, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Troglis, T-R-O-G-O-I-S, or you can check out the eBay and Reverb listings. All right, Troglis, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Troglis Guitar Show, and we'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Take care.